Female genital mutilation or circumcision refers to any procedure involving the partial or total removal of a girl's genitalia for non-medical reasons. The major reason given is to control a woman's sexuality. In some culture, it is a rite of passage preparing young girls for womanhood and marriage. Of great concern is the procedure itself because it is often done by untrained persons with little or no medical knowledge on sterilized sharp objects such as razor blade, scissors and glass are used. <laughs> However, health officials say there are no medical reasons for female genital mutilation. There are certain health complications that can arise from performing that procedure. One of them is it, it distorts the female genitalia. You know, it causes um, it, it has an effect of infertility in the sense that you know it affects penetration. There are lots of um, you know complications. Like I said, infertility is one of them. Even during childbirth, there is difficulty in in um, childbirth. You know, because of you know that you know stitching together of the labia mineral and labia majora create making that area to be very narrowed. So that's another complication. Okay, concerning this um, non-medical act. In a recent campaign, the Nigerian Governor's Wives Forum highlights this act as a gender-based violence. All in the name of culture and tradition. Cultures change. They are not static. Tradition should empower and not disempower. Can't we see what we are doing to ourselves? Must this terrible practice continue just because you experienced it too? Female genital mutilation is a global phenomenon. According to the World Health Organization, 200 million girls have been circumcised worldwide. It is estimated that 10% are in Nigeria. In 2015, Nigeria enacted the Violence Act Against Persons Prohibition Act, which includes a ban on female circumcision or genital mutilation. The law provides for a four-year jail term or a fine or both. In spite of this, the practice still persists. It is said to be prevalent in Oyo, Oshun, Eboi, Imo and Ekiti states. Survivors say they face severe health complications. Some even bleed to death after the procedure. So they mutilated it. Ah. It's like cutting out a piece of flesh from someone's body. That's how it feels. I wasn't circumcised, but I've witnessed that of a three-year-old girl. In fact, the little girl was taken from her peers while they were playing. It's not like she was aware about the whole process before then. For like two days, she couldn't sit. Circumcising girls is bad because they can use one razor blade for ten girls without sterilizing it, thereby risking them to infections like HIV. I'm a survivor of circumcision. Mutilating girls is something that has been for a long time. Since the days of our forefathers, both male and female are circumcised. The United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund is collaborating with the Nigerian government to ensure that female genital mutilation is completely eradicated. What is UNICEF doing to support the eradication of female genital mutilation in Nigeria? As you know, United Nations Children's Fund has a statutory mandate as a UN agency to, put, to support government of member countries to promote the rights of every child. And in UNICEF, we prioritize the right of women and girls. A lot has been done, I would say, but a lot needs to be done. Yeah. But I would like to take us to where we are coming from. Uh, before now, the prevalence of FGM in Nigeria is 25%. But by the current NDHS, 
That's the National Demographic Health Survey. It has reduced to 20%. So you can see that we have had some reduction. Non-government organizations, as well as individuals, have risen to the call to ensure that the practice doesn't continue. We have recommended that the issues of major genital mutilation be uh, incorporated in the curriculum of, uh, of primary schools and secondary schools for them to teach children what you know, female genital mutilation is and why they should not practice it. We, we have involved the police. So the police is at an alert that that practice is no longer um, um, you know, uh, allowed. It's, it's illegal in Nigeria. And so anybody, if, if you are a mother and you do that to your child, then you are guilty of an offense. If you are a grandmother and you, you, you uh, induce your child to, do, to be part of, to, you know, your child who is a, a mother to go and do that, you, the grandmother, is also an accomplice. And you have, um, you know, uh, you have uh, um, gone against the law and some sanctions will be brought against you. Non-government organizations, as well as individuals, have risen to the call to ensure that the practice doesn't continue. It's about engaging and intensifying the sensitization on this uh, issue, letting people know that it's a crime to cut someone and also to engage other relevant stakeholders like the cultural leaders, religious leaders who are on the front line still practicing this, to engage them in discussion, deliberate dialogue, I'll say, in addressing some of these issues, to understand the ideas from their own part and also to provide other measures that uh, can be put in place to address FGM in Nigeria. So we need more laws uh, for all our laws that have been passed into law to be advocated, to be domesticated in all the states in Nigeria. Female genital mutilation is rooted in our culture, it is rooted in our tradition. But on the other hand, our constitution does not frown at this practice. It doesn't frown at female genital mutilation. It is not stated clearly that this practice of female genital mutilation is a crime. So no one is held responsible when this act is being carried out. But nonetheless, I want to give credit to, to individuals who have taken it up upon themselves to create awareness in different levels, um, non-governmental organizations who are working tirelessly to see that they bring awareness even to the rural areas, and multimedia outlets that create content just to dissuade this activity and all of that. They are doing a great job. Sots. In spite of the illegality, there have been no known convictions and punishment. The consensus is that in addition to enlightenment, applying the law will help reduce and ultimately end the practice.